Seems like every time I find my way over to Ross ACB's place, I wind up coming home with something computer related. This is the latest acquisition. If you have a closer look at it, you can see here that it says Toshiba. And that's what it is. You flip it around, being sure to actually get it correct. <laughs> you can see it says Tekra A8. And here's the model, which you can hopefully read. 15 volt input, I have the power supply and all that. Apparently, when this thing was purchased, it cost $9.99. And it's in fairly decent condition. But the most interesting thing on this machine happens to be this sticker right here, which we can go ahead and have a look at. Let's see, it says, Computers for Schools. It talks about how Microsoft products licensed on blahs, blah, 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 governed by School Donation Program License Agreement, blah, 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 that are attached to the system, blah, blah, blah. Well, there really isn't any licensed stuff attached to the system unless you count the Windows XP Pro for refurbished PC sticker, which there isn't. But basically, this thing is an off-lease machine, or was an off-lease machine, and rather than being sent for recycling, it was donated to, I think, Microsoft. They were donated to Microsoft themselves and refurbished by Microsoft and then given to schools at no cost. It was a way for schools to get machines when they couldn't afford to get machines and a way to get more computers into classrooms, basically. Um, I have no idea if they're still doing that program now. They could be. They could not be. But uh, either way, that's what this was, which is pretty neat. We'll just go take a quick little overview. There's the vent. There is an SD card slot here, as well as a PCMCIA card slot underneath it. Take a look even further here. We've got Firewire, Ethernet, three USB ports, presumably 1.1. I'd be surprised if they're 2.0. Power jack is in the middle for some reason. I'm not sure why they decided to do that. VGA, a serial port. S-Video output, modem. On this side, you get your Kensington lock. A DVD-ROM CDRW, which is an interesting choice for a business machine, or what would have been a business machine anyway. On the front, you have a very interesting card of ports. Well, somewhat interesting. There is a wireless switch there. A volume control, which, unlike Toshiba's typical analog volume slider, it's it's a wheel, but it's not a wheel. It doesn't turn all the way. It's like a, a software-controlled wheel, so to speak. And, of course, you got your headphone, your microphone, SD access, charging or AC power, power, battery charge state, disk activity, and network activity. All right. This thing does have at least a semi-functional battery. We'll go ahead and open it up here. So I'm going to and I change cameras here over to the Hitachi from the Sharp. If you thought that you couldn't see any of the ports and the keyboard and whatnot, it couldn't see the screen at all. So hopefully this will be a little better. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. On battery. Spam the escape key and we'll get a message asking us to check the system. Huh, still really can't read it. Push F1. Kind of washed out. Well, you can see it better now on this camera. Let's see, 4 gigs of RAM, which isn't too bad. The date is correct. The time is not. Time is three hours slow. See all the uh, various modes. This is the old style Toshiba BIOS, which doesn't really tell you a whole lot about really much of anything. Um, it doesn't tell you what the CPU speed is or what the CPU is itself. It doesn't tell you what hard drives you got installed. It really doesn't tell you anything. ACPI BIOS version 3.2. He gets a kick out of it every time I say it. I'm going to have to check for an updated BIOS for this thing. Not that I'm sure Toshiba will have one. But I think I'm going to leave everything alone in setup. What I'm going to do 
is I'm going to install a new operating system. It's running Windows 10 right now, which is really not a nice thing to ask of this. So I'm going to install Lubuntu Linux. And uh, just a little bit of a flashback. What made me start making YouTube videos was Lubuntu Linux on a Toshiba laptop. Although, in this case, it was very different circumstances, it was about nine years ago. And we're talking the very first release of Lubuntu Linux and a Toshiba Satellite L300D040, which was a piece of crap laptop. I'm not going to get too far into it, just to say that the experience was crap, and the video that I made ranting about how the experience was crap was crappier. Okay, let me go get that disk and we'll try this out. To share a little bit of a tip with you, if you want to go to a boot device selection, push the arrow keys, and what you'll end up seeing is something similar to this. And you can use the arrow keys to navigate between devices. I want to boot to the CD, of course. Which hopefully it just did. Oh, it just turned off because it ran out of battery. <laughs> I shouldn't harp on it. I spent probably a good five or ten minutes wool gathering about what camcorder I should use in place of the Sharp. Um, so, I mean, it's not necessarily a great battery any longer, but it's more than enough. It's it's basically a UPS. That would be the best way to describe it. I'm trying to keep these videos short, so I'm not going to show you the whole boot process because people complain about the length of my videos and that they're too long and I do way too much waffling. Which is an assessment I don't agree with, because apparently everybody else on the internet can do it, except for me. But that is what it is. Okay, as you can tell, this is definitely not uh, Lubuntu. It's actually Zubuntu. I switched to it because I don't know what Lubuntu was doing, but it definitely wasn't working. And this really is kind of slow, so I'm hoping that this is going to work out. I guess we'll see when... Uh, we finally get to the process where we run it on the system. We get to the point where it's running on the system. I can't talk today. Apparently. Wow, that is awful. No idea what the deal is. And of course it's complaining about incomplete language support. Who cares? I don't. Nobody in their right mind would care. But at least it's up now, I suppose. This thing is a real piece of crap. It's like worse than the N270 that is in my netbook downstairs. No joke. In fact, I think it's actually also worse than the AMD E350 APU in that HP 2000 thing. And I didn't think I'd ever see anything that was worse than that. This is bad. Yep, this thing's definitely a piece, I tell you what. Anyway. Look at system. We can see it says Ubuntu. It's not Ubuntu. CPU is a Intel. Oops. It says genuine Intel T2300. It's a Core 2 Duo T2300. Um, not very good. 1.66 gigahertz. 32 bit only. Really kind of a piece. In fact, I'll be honest with you when I say I'd rather have an AMD E350 APU than one of these things. But stuck with what you got. And of course, it's limited to about 3.5 gigs of RAM. Actually, even less than that, really, but it is what it is. SCSI device. No, no idea why it's calling it SCSI. I believe it's a Fujitsu 60 gigabyte drive. Yeah. And there's a hardware listing. Yeah, whatever. That's pretty much it. I don't have anything else to share with you. This video is already long enough. So. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off, and I hope to see you next time. Till then.